Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in our tutorial series on Spring Data JPA. In this video we are going to be building upon the last one that we had, so we are going to be extending our specifications. If you remember in the last video we have added a specification that enables us to um, fetch all of the entities with the created timestamp. So we provide a timestamp and we can catch the uh, we can fetch the entities. But now in this video we want to focus on uh, fetching addresses, so address specific uh, queries uh, we are going to be building in this video. So we're going to extend this address repository to be able to fetch addresses uh, by their name. Uh, in order to do this, uh, we first have to extend our distributed repository interface. So we want to add one method here, uh, which will be basically called find all, and uh, it's going to take in a specification here. So let me add that and then I'll explain you what we have. So here it is. Uh, like I said, uh, one method here uh, called find all and it takes in specification. So this enables us to basically send any kind of specification that we build somewhere else in our case in the address repository. The next thing that we want to do is we want to jump to our implementation of the distributed repository by clicking this button here. Uh, then here we want to implement uh, the method that we just added. So let me do that first. And here it is. We have done uh, some changes. So we have implemented the method. Uh, that was added to our interface. As you can see, this already exists in the superclass. We just call it there. Uh, and so this method, where, which is called find all and takes in specification, it exists in the superclass. Yeah, I can actually jump to it. So it's in the simple JPA repository. And uh, what we also did uh, is to replace the call here. So if we can take a look at here, it was super.findall uh, with the create timestamp. Now we just call this one here. And okay, so we can close these two now. And the next thing is uh, that we want to go is to the address repository. We see we want to actually build the specification to search by name inside of the address repository. The way we are going to be doing that is we're going to add a static or inner spec class where all of our specifications be will be listed. And then there we're going to implement it and then use it in wherever we want. So in our case, in our test, uh, let me implement that really fast and then I'll guide you through what we have. And here it is. We have added one inner class called specs. So basically all of our specifications will be listed within this class since we're doing this since we are in the interface. And uh, the way we implement this specification, uh, so this is just for some logging that we can have some nice logs. We'll see them later. The way we implement this uh, is we have a static method that returns a specification of type uh, with the type address because that's our entity in this repository and uh, it's called by name, you can name it whatever you want, and it takes in a pattern. And uh, the way we do that is we go uh, with our criteria builder, we use the like keyword. So basically saying, uh, give me anything um, from this entity. Uh, so on this property name, that's like this pattern. We're going to see how this exactly works in our test. But uh, basically that's it. So this enables us to search by the name. You could use equal here, so CB uh, equal, but this would must then this would be exact match. So you would have to match the name exactly. I would show you how we can um, search for a part of our word. Um, okay, then once we have done this, uh, let's extend our tests. Let's uh, go to the address repository test and uh, let's add another test here that enables us to search by name and then let's see how it looks like. So uh, here we are. So we have our test with find address by name. So that's the name of the test. And we have created two addresses here with some names. The first thing that we do is we try to find an address by a dummy name. So some name that doesn't exist. And uh, what happens is uh, that we expect that the result is empty. So basically we don't find anything. The way we provide the pattern to the repository itself is we call the address repository. Uh, uh, so this inner class, and then we call our specification, however we named it. In my case, it's called by name and we provide a pattern. As I said, we don't find anything in this case. Then we try to find the first address by its name. So we're just doing exactly the same thing, but now we are providing the name of the first address and we expect it to be found. Then in the case of the second address, uh, we are providing, um, uh, a part of it. So you can, you can see that here is the full name of the address. And at the end, it has uh, England as a word. And what I did uh, is I provided this 
character here, which basically says, give me all of the addresses with name uh, that end with this part here, what I have marked. So this uh, would be the left side of the keyword. I could append this uh, to uh, the pattern manually, so you can implement that as you want, so that you always append this and it would always search for something that is contained within a, uh, within the name. So if I would, uh, in this specification, if I would automatically append it like this, I could search for example, this, and then I would be able to find this address. But if I would remove these characters, then I would not be able to find anything because uh, the pattern does not uh, contain this special character. So let me revert everything. Um, if I start my test now, uh, we should see that it works. Uh, so here we are. So we have run our tests. Uh, we can see that they work and maybe we can uh, see our logs. Let me see. Uh, somewhere here we have it. So building specification by name. So with our first uh, pattern that we provided. So this is with the second, which is the name of the first address. And then this special pattern that we have. You can see that uh, we also append automatically this character at the end. Actually, no, we have it in our name, so I forgot to remove it. So we append that and then it also works. Okay, um, now the next thing that I want to show you is how we can actually see the SQL queries that are being executed, because that's also interesting for us. So um, I want you to go to your test module, to the application properties, uh, where we have this, and I want you to uh, extend it with following, uh, following values. After you have added these two uh, key value pairs, Basically, this uh, just tells us, okay, show me the SQL, and this uh, makes it a bit prettier, so it formats it. We can go back to our repository test, we can rerun it again, and then um, after they have been ran, uh, we can see some queries. We can, for example, we can see here that the Hibernate is dropping the table, so this is on start, and then recreating it. Um, then it, we also have inserts, where we are inserting some values into the um, table address. Um, basically, this is creating the first address and this is creating the second address. Then uh, we can see that we are building, so we can see here by our log, building specification by name. And uh, you can see then the query. We are selecting the ID, create a timestamp, modify timestamp and a name from address and where the name is like and whatever our pattern is. And then we repeat that for uh, our two next calls. And then you can see the dropping of the table and so on. So basically, yeah, that's it. That's everything for this video. Uh, hopefully it's clear for you guys. If there are some questions, uh, just leave them down in the comments and uh, I will try to get to them as soon as possible. Until then, I will see you in the next video.